Isang magandang magandang buhay po mga kasambuhay. Ako po si Father Domi Guzman ng Society of St. Paul, doing all for the gospel. At uh, sa ngalan po ng aking mga kasamahang mga pari, brothers, mga junior professed members at seminarista ng Society of St. Paul, Philippine Macau Province, at sa ngalan din po ng ating mga kapatid na pari, sa Archdiocese of Manila at gayon din ng staff ng TB Maria ang atin pong mission partner kayo po ay aming tinitipan na makiisa, makimisa ngayon pong ikalabing apat ng Hulyo 2019 ito po ang 15th Sunday in Ordinary Time at syempre po sa ating pagmimisa sa araw na ito nais po nating batiin at isama sa ating mga intentions ang mga homebound na mga may sakit po natin, yung mga cancer patients po na umaantabay sa atin pong programa at uh, nananalangin ng kanilang uh, kagiyat na paggaling. Gayun din po, we would like to remember and pray para po sa mga elderly at mga caregivers po ninyo, yung ating mga persons on duty tulad po ng mga militar at uh, police, mga doctors at mga health workers dyan po sa mga emergency rooms ng iba't ibang mga ospital. And of course, ang atin pong libo-libo na mga OFWs, Overseas Filipino Workers. Greetings and prayers din po para sa ating mga Canada-based na mission partners, si Brother Alex Pideris, si Dorothy Santos Merck, Annie Adorna, Emily at Dante Reyes at ang kanyang pamilya, si Joy at Alex Reyes at ang kanilang pamilya, si Doktora Jo Adorna Guzman at ang kanyang pamilya at gayon din po ang pamilya ni Alicia Adorna. Para din po sa ating mga long time na mga kasambuhay, we would like to pray for your intentions. Ang Masigan Family, Chowa Family, Arrojado Family, Villarus Family, Jacob Family o Jacob Family, Mariel Diaz, ang kusina ni Kambal, ni Delio at uh, Irma San Miguel, ang uh, ang atin pong kaibigan dyan sa Hong Kong, si Corazon Ochoa at Rosita Kauyan, si Alma Gonzales at ang kanyang buong pamilya. At gayon din po ang ating mga long time na mga love offerers. Yan, sina Romel Salvador, Gemma Candela, May Asuncion Recio, Rachel Esteban at Lailani, Palladio Himotea. Nais nice din po nating uh, batiin ang atin pong mga pilgrimage uh, groups, ang spell group ng March 2019. Ito po ang magkakaibigan ng mga graduates ng La Consolacion Caloocan. Yan, no? And then of course, ang pilgrimage group ng October 2018 ng Journeys of Faith. Kasama na po riyan ang ating mga jubilarians na sina Father Randy, Charlie, Joe Alves. Gayon din po ang Merinol Missionary, si Father Joy. At ang magkakaibigan na sina Cora Cabral, Geraldine Lee, Grace Lara, Marie Joyce Brillo, Jimmy Olaso, Jane San Benaventura, Nino Molina, Willie at Arlina Onglao, si Marites, si Anton Santos at Juliet Oraile, si Mr. and Mrs. Benji Datok, si uh, Chrissy Highland, Rose Lisi, Rose Bell D at William D, ang Tantuiko Group ni Dana, Kathleen at Tal, at gayon din po ang mag-asawang Grace Pulido Tan at Nonoy Tan, at si Silbet at Juliet Estolas at ang mag-asawang Iris at Val Rivero. 
Uh, we would like also to greet ang ating pong uh, March 2019 din naman na pilgrimage group ng Recto Clan at ang kanilang mga kaibigan. Binabati po natin si Tito Manny na nagdiriwang ng kanyang 80th birthday sa buwan pong ito ng July at gayon din si Sister Lulu Recto na nagdiriwang naman ng 79th birthday ngayon din pong buwan ng July. We would like to acknowledge ang atin pong mga messages at mga mass intentions na ipinadala by means of our digital media si Verna Cruz. Sabi niya, kayo na po Panginoon ang bahala sa aming mag-asawa na nawa kami po ay biyayaan mo ng anak. Wow, no? Alam niyo po, uh, talagang napakahalaga lalo-lalo na sa mag-asawa yung pagkakaroon siyempre ng kanilang anak and we would like to pray for Verna Cruz and uh, yung kanyang asawa. Si Maria Socorro Fuentes naman na is niyang ipanalangin ang kapayapaan ng mundo, ang kagalingan ni Claro at lahat po ng mga may sakit, ang eternal repose ni Ebalin, Evangelina, Hiliodoro at lahat po ng mga kaluluwa sa purgatorio. Si Rolando Villanueva, sabi niya, nais niyang ipanalangin ang kanyang nanay na si Avelina Ran Ranas Villanueva para sa kanyang good health at ang eternal repose naman ng kanyang kapatid na si Ronald Ranas Villanueva. Ito nga palang si Rolando, siya po ay nakikisambuhay sa atin mula po sa Riyadh, sa Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Mula naman sa Daman, Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, si Grace Arquero at uh, nais niya magpasalamat sa lahat ng mga binibigay na pagpapala ng Panginoon sa kanya. Si Amy o Amy Salonga would like to play, pray for the complete recovery of Manny Lianes. At si Jonah Villarmino naman, nais niyang ipanalangin po natin ang kanyang mga anak at pamilya samantalang si Jonah ay nagtatrabaho dyan po sa Riyadh, sa Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Dumako naman po tayo sa Dubai, uh, natanggap po natin ang mass intentions ni Joseph Barredo para po sa kanyang kapatid na si Felix Barredo Jr. at si Erwin Arpon, kanya prayers for my lower back pain and pain in my left leg. And lastly, si Resa Tamala, sabi niya, Thank you, Lord, for another day. Prayers for the good health, for good health at eternal rest grant to my Papa Domingo and Mama Irenea. At gayon din po, prayers din para sa kanya Lolo, Lola, at mga relatives at para sa mga kaluluwa sa purgatorio. Ngayon po, 15th Sunday, In ordinary time, kung atin pong paglalaanan ng konting pagninilay ang ating mga readings for today, para po sa akin ang dating ng mga pagbasa na atin pong celebrate sa banal na misa ngayon is that they tell us how God has programmed us for goodness. Bawat isa sa atin ay binigyan ng Diyos ng pagkilala patungo sa basic goodness o kabutihan. No? Yan po yung tinatawag nila sa moral theology na sinderesis. Yan, na bawat tao, hindi lang bawat kristyano, bawat tao ay merong paggusto na masundan kung ano ang tama at ano ang mabuti. So, tignan po ninyo, ang first reading po natin sa Old Testament mula sa aklat ng Deuteronomy 
ang sabi po ni Moses sa mga Israelita, If only you could heed the voice of the Lord and keep His commandments. For, Kanya, what I command on you is not too mysterious, not too remote. It is in your mouth, it is in your heart. You only have to carry it out. At totoo po yun. You do not have to be Christian to be good. Lahat po ng tao gustong maging mabuti sa kanilang pakikipagkapwa-tao, no? Sapagkat isinulat ng Diyos sa puso natin bilang mga nilikha at kawangis ng Diyos ang kabutihan at ang kagandahan. Okay? So, siyempre, sa second reading, Colossians chapter 1, verse 15 to 20, sabi doon, Christ is the image of the invisible God. Siyempre, kung ikaw ay kristyano at kumikilala sa Panginoong Yesus, lalo na kasi ang pangaral at ang halimbawa mismo ng buhay ng Panginoong Yesus ay image of the invisible God. Lalo dapat maging maigting yung kabutihan at yung kagandahang asal ng pagiging kristyano. Oh? And then, of course, sa gospel reading natin ay atin pong maririnig ang kwento ng Good Samaritan. Alam niyo yung mga Good Samaritan, ito po ay consider ng mga hudyo, ng mga heretiko, mga tao na diluted ang kanilang pangaral tungkol sa Diyos, lalo-lalo na sila'y napa sa ilalim ng mga pagan countries ng panahon na yon. Pero tignan nyo, hindi po nasira ng ganong klasing background yung basic goodness netong Samaritan na hindi nagawa ng mga religyoso na dumaan. Pari, Levita, inavoid nilang lahat yung paggawa ng mabuti. So, para po sa akin, this is a message of hope. No? Na kung tayo ay marunong tayong i-evoke, ano ba i-evoke? Yung bang uh, i-develop yung uh, pagtawag sa kabutihan ng sino man, then possible po na sa mundo natin ngayon, marami man tayong pagkakaiba, there is the strand may tumatahi sa atin na basic goodness at ito po ay nanggagaling sa ginawa ng Diyos na kalooban ng bawat isa sa atin. Yan po ang ating ipanalangin. No? Na nawa ito ang maging uh, pundasyon ng uh, kapayapaan at maayos na pakikipagkapwa-tao sa ating mundo. So narito na po ang ating banal na misa mula po sa oratorio ni Maria, reyna ng mga apostol sa atin pong kumbento sa Society of St. Paul, 7708 St. Paul Road, San Antonio Village, Makati.
coming together in thanksgiving we begin our celebration in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit amen the lord be with you and with your spirit in today's gospel jesus is asked what must i do to inherit everlasting life it is a question that we ourselves earnestly ask today what must we do in order to be saved jesus narrates to us the parable of the good samaritan this is a story in which people have friends and enemies meet accidents avoid trouble or go out of their way to help someone to be a neighbor is to be more human one who is more sensitive to life and to the joys and pains of people it is in being a neighbor that our faith is shown for what it really is and not merely as some form of dogma or teaching therefore brethren let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries You were sent to hear the contrite of heart, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Your mighty God of mercy in us, forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. God, who showed the light of your truth to those who go astray, so that they may return to the right path, give all who, for the faith that they profess, are accounted Christians the grace to reject whatever is contrary to the name of Christ, and to strive after all that does it honor. For Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses said to the people, If only you will hear the voice of the Lord, your God, and keep his commandments and statutes that are written in this book of the law, when you return to the Lord your God with all your heart and all your soul. For this command that I enjoin on you today is not too mysterious and remote for you. It is not up in the sky that you should say, who will go up in the sky to get it for us and tell us of it, that we may carry it out. Nor it is across the sea that you should say, who will cross the sea to get it out for us and tell us of it that we may carry it out. No, it is something very near to you already 
in your mouths and in your hearts. You have only to carry it out. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Turn to the Lord in your need and you will live. Turn to the Lord in your need and you will live. I pray to you, O Lord, for the time of your favor, O God. In your greatness, kindness, answer me with your constant help. Answer me, O Lord, for bounteous is your kindness. In your great mercy, turn toward me. Turn to the Lord in your need, and you will live. I am afflicted and in pain. Let your saving help, O God, protect me. I will praise the name of God in song, and I will glorify him with thanksgiving. Turn to the Lord in your need, and you will live. See, you lowly ones, and be glad. You who seek God, may your hearts revive. For the Lord hears the poor, and his own who are in bonds, he spurns not. Turn to the Lord in your need, and you will live. For God will save Zion and rebuild the cities of Judah. The descendants of his servants shall inherit it and those who love his name shall inhabit it. Turn to the Lord in your need, and you will live. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Christ Jesus is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation, for in him were created all things in heaven and on earth, the visible and the invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created through him and for him. He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. He is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he himself might be preeminent. For in him all the fullness was pleased to dwell, and through him to reconcile all things for him, making peace by the blood of his cross through him, whether those on heaven or those on earth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. There was a scholar of the law who stood up to test Jesus and said, Teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus said to him, What is written in the law? How do you read it? He said in reply, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your being, with all your strength, and with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. And replied to him, You have answered correctly. Do this, and you will live. But because he wished to justify himself, he said to Jesus, And who is my neighbor? Jesus replied, a man fell victim to robbers as he went down from Jer Jerusalem to Jericho. They stripped and beat him and went off leaving him half dead. A priest happened to be going down the road, but when he saw him, he passed by on the opposite side. Likewise, a Levite came to the place, and when he saw him, he passed by on the opposite side. But a Samaritan traveler who came upon him was moved with compassion at the sight. He approached the victim, poured oil and wine over his wounds, and bandaged them. 
Then he lifted him up on his own animal, took him to an inn, and cared for him. The next day he took out two silver coins and gave them to the innkeeper with the instruction, Take care of him. If you spend more than what I have given you, I shall repay you on my way back. Which of these three, in your opinion, was neighbor to the robber's victim? Honey answered, The one who treated him with mercy. And Jesus said to him, Go and do likewise. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Magandang araw po sa inyong lahat, no? lalo na yun sa mga nandito at yung mga sumusubaybay sa ating Sambuhay TV Mass. No? Yung mga nandun sa iba-ibang parte ng mundo, yung mga nandun sa Japan, no? wherever you are, it's a good day and we bless God for the wonderful day. Our Gospel reading today is very, very familiar sa atin, no? the Good Samaritan. And the Good Samaritan is ready an old cliche. Pag may natutulungan kang tao, ang sinasabi nila, it's a Good Samaritan. In fact, in the States, meron na silang Good Samaritan law, but which penalized those who would not help the needy. No? In fact, one way or another, all of us have experienced that of a person who has been a good Samaritan to us. No? Siguro yung mga tumulong nung nasiraan tayong kotse, kung tumulong sa pagtulak, o yung tumulong sa atin na pag ano ng ating mga flat tire, o siguro sa inyo, tumulong na nakapunta kayo abroad or wherever you're working now. They have been good Samaritan to your life. In fact, this Gospel reading today simply reminds us of two challenges of our Christian life. First challenge that is asked of us is to look outside of ourselves. To look, rather than looking inside, to look on the needs of those who are in need, to look outside on the others. And what is more important is to be able to think less of ourselves and thinking more of others. And the second challenge that is asked of us, of us in this Gospel reading today is being able that when we realize the need of others, thinking of others, what is more important is doing something. Hindi yung alam mo yung pangangailangan ng iba, hindi, mo, hindi yung alam mo na yung mga needs na iba, ang sasabihin na lang natin eh, okay na, pagdasal na lang kita. No. Maybe one way or another, this is what had happened with the Levite and those uh, particular, the priests who happened by the roadside. Maybe they took pity on the man. Maybe they saw the need of the man. But maybe they had other priorities. And siguro sinasabi nila, okay, pagdasal ko na lang kayo. And they went on the opposite side. This, my dear friends, is indeed a challenge for us to be able to see others, and more importantly also to make a step to do something in order to help others. That's the other side of the, of the parable that we have today. Because the other side of the parable that we have today could also be seen kung tayo, when we try to relate kung tayo yung victim. If we were the victim because what is more important for us to realize is that God indeed gives us surprises in our life alam ng Diyos kung kailan tayo nangangailangan alam ng Diyos kung kailan tayo dapat puntahan alam ng Diyos kung kailan tayo kanya bubuhatin the Lord is there when we are in need. This is also the wonderful side of this parable of the Good Samaritan, that God is there when we are a victim, that God cares when we fall into the robber's hand, that God is there to take care of us when we are in pain. 
That's why today's gospel reading today reminds us of the gift that we have received from God. That even though we are not worthy, even though we have been sinful, God still cares for us. God surprised us with His love and with His care. That's why it is also important for us to realize that, that God has been truly there for us. And the most important thing is that realizing God's love, it is then for each one of us to share that love to others, to share that care to others. God has loved us first. That's why, that's why it is also wonderful that in the way we live, we should also be able to share that love that we have experienced from God. This parable of the Good Samaritan reminds us of the grace that we have received from God, of the love that we have received from God. And this love, this grace that we have received, must also make us go and move out from ourselves in order to be in service and love for one another. Let us ask continually for that grace, that as we continue in our liturgical celebration, that we would always be sensitive of the love and the grace that we have received every day of our life so that every day of our life, we would also be there to care and to love one another. Amen. Pray to the Father that you may learn to imitate his unconditional love as depicted in the parable of the Good Samaritan. With all sincerity, we pray, Lord, let us love you in others. Lord, Lord let, let us love you in others. That the ministers of the church, Pope Francis, bishops, priests, and deacons, 
may not only speak about love, but be compassionate and loving, so that after preaching to others, they themselves may receive the gift of salvation, we pray. Lord, Lord let, let us love you in others. That our newly elected officials may not only focus on administering the basic services of government to the community, but also design programs that would improve the living conditions of the citizenry, we pray. Lord, let us love you in others. That those whose profession is to help the sick and the needy, doctors, nurses, social workers, may be strongly motivated by gentleness and love for those they help, we pray. Lord, let us love you in others. That those who lie wounded on the road, the street children, the victims of sexual abuse, the old and the lonely, may find good Samaritans who will assist them and restore their health and confidence, we pray. Lord, let us love you in others. That the Lord bless each family as they extend their helping hand to those in need, we pray. Lord, let us love you in others. Father of all mercies, we come to you with praise and gratitude for your loving concern. May your spirit be always with us as we strive to live your commandment of love through Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours will be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His holy church. Look upon the offerings of your church, O Lord, as she makes her prayers to you, and grant that when consumed by those who believe, they may bring ever greater holiness. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For when your children were scattered by sin, through the blood of your Son and power of the Spirit, you gather them again to yourself, that a people form as one by the unity of the Trinity. May the body of Christ and the temple of the Holy Spirit, might to the praise of your manifold wisdom, be manifest as the church. And so in the company of the choirs of angels, we praise you and with one joy we proclaim. Oh, uh -huh. 
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the do fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Luis Antonio, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints, who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty, Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, O glory and honor is yours forever and ever. The Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say.
Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace be with you all. This is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are we who are called to receive him. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. For those who cannot receive communion, join us in praying the spiritual communion. Jesus Master, you assure me I am the life. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood will have eternal life. In baptism and in the sacrament of reconciliation, you have communicated to me this life of yours. Now you nourish it by making yourself my food. Take my heart. Detach it from the vain things of the world. With all my heart, I love you above all things because you are infinite good and eternal happiness. Amen. Prayer of Overseas Workers Saint Michael the Archangel, I am about to leave my family and the physical and emotional distance affect me. The physical distance means I will be living in a totally different culture where everything will be new. The emotional distance implies that no longer will I be able to embrace my loved ones when I want to. You have done special mission for God and you did it confidently, trusting that everything will be all right because our Creator 
has everything in His hands. Share with me the same faith. Make this travel a part of my mission here on earth. I have to live for the good of my family and loved ones. I have to live to do God's will. While I am away from them, protect them from dangers. Let them feel my presence through my letters and calls. Make us a strong family, even though we are far from one another. Saint Michael, through your intercession, may Jesus be the light of the family and Mary be our mother too. Amen. Let us pray. Having consumed these gifts, we pray, O Lord, that by our participation in this mystery, its saving effects upon us may grow. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. Bestow pardon and peace, O Lord, we pray, upon your faithful, that they may be cleansed from every offense, and serve you with untroubled hearts. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come up, down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go forth in the service of Christ. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. Tayo po ay uh, nagpapasalamat sa ating priest presider sa misa po natin sa araw na ito. At, uh, ngayon naman po ay dadako tayo doon sa atin pong katikismo pabaon galing po sa Laudato Si ang uh, encyclical ni Pope Francis tungkol sa atin pong concern, pagkalinga sa ating tahanan. Dili walang iba kung hindi ang mundo na atin pong minana mula sa kalooban at kagandahang loob ng Diyos. Laudato si. Dito sa chapter 1, uh, kung saan po tayo naroroon, iniisa-isa po ni Pope Francis yung uh, kanyang uh, assessment, evaluation. ba diba? Sa spiritual life, nagsisimula yan sa examen. Examen of conscience. No? Uh, dito naman, Uh, nagkakaroon ng examen si Pope Francis, uh, ano na ba ang uh, katayuan ng atin pong mundo? No? So, hindi masyadong uh, bright ang kwento. Uh, narinig natin last time kung paano inilarawan ni Pope Francis ang isyo ng pollution. No? Ngayon naman, kanya, the issue of climate. Yan. Ang klima, ang uh, kagandahan ng panahon, ang kondisyon ng panahon, ito po ay napakahalaga sa lahat po ng gawain ng tao. No? 
So, pero sabi nga niya, itong mga nakalipas na mga dekada ay uh, nadanas, naranasan natin yung tinatawag po na global warming, ang pag-init ng mundo at ang pagtaas naman ng lebelo ng tubig ng karagatan at gayon din ang malimit na pagbaha do sa mga tinatawag natin na low-lying areas uh, kung saan marami ang ating mga kababayang nasa laylayan ng lipunan ang apektado. And of course, there is also the increase of weather events na napaka-extreme, di po ba? Sobrang lamig, sobrang ulan, sobrang init, no? Lahat sobra, ibang klase. Now, sabi po ni Pope Francis, ito'y hindi lamang mga simpleng pagbabago sa klima ng mundo kung hindi itong mga pagbabagong ito ay nauugnay sa lifestyle natin. Kaya nga sabi niya, kailangan natin ng conversion ng lifestyle at bahagi yan upang mapangalagaan natin ang buong kalikasan na binigay ng Diyos sa atin. Halimbawa, kanya, yung pong uh, global warming, yan po ay dahil sa greenhouse effect na kung saan yung mga carbon dioxide, methane, nitrogen oxides, at iba pang mga gas na, 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 na lumalabas dahil sa iba't ibang aktibidades ng tao, lahat pong ito ay parang bumubuo ng isang lambong tent, no? isang lambong sa mundo na kung saan po yung init ng araw na nakareflect sa mundo ay hindi po nadidisperse. Kung hindi nakoconcentrate, nakukulob, lalo-lalo na po sapagkat uh, napakalakas nga ng carbon dioxide na dulot ng paggamit natin ng sobra-sobra na fossil fuel. Yan, yung gasolina. Fossil fuel po yan. Yung diesel. So, lahat pong ito, itong worldwide energy system na ito, ay malaki ang epekto dito po sa carbon cycle. No? Now, ano ang nangyayari kapag mataas ang carbon dioxide? Kapag mataas daw po ang carbon dioxide, dahan-dahan, marami dun sa mga tinatawag na mga biodiversity. Iba't ibang mga uri ng buhay sa mundo, lalong-lalo na iba't ibang uri ng hayop ang dahan-dahang nangamamatay. At kung nag-climate change dahil po sa init ng carbon dioxide at... Uh, init ng araw, sabi doon, magme-melt yung uh, polar ice cap doon po sa North Pole at sa South Pole at ang danger naman neto, pag nagme-melt pala ang ice, na re release naman ang methane gas. Okay? So, methane naman ang lumalabas doon sa pag -re release na yon ng mga ice na tubig at maliban po doon, yung mga dati-dati ay frozen na mga patay na organismo magde-decompose at yon panibagong mga infeksyon ang lumalabas. Nako, ito pala ang dahilan kung bakit ngayon po ay samot-sari ang mga sakit na atin pong nai-encounter na sabi nga nung iba dati-dati wala naman yung ganyang klasing infeksyon. Bakit ngayon ay matindi? Yung pala yun, no? Interrelated po. At ang apektado dito, sabi po ni Pope Francis, yung mga may hirap na nakadepende sa kalikasan, sa agrikultura, sa pangingisda, sa forestry. O isipin ninyo kapag namatay yung mga ibang klasing isda, Ibang klaseng mga lamang dagat na matay dahil sa napakataas na methane, napakataas na carbon, o siyempre yung mangingisda, 
hindi na ganon ang kalakas ng kanilang nauhuling isda. Apektador na rin po. Ang, therefore, ang kanilang hanap buhay at buhay pamilya. Kaya nga po, alam nyo itong entire system ng nangyayari ngayon sa atin pong daigdig at kalikasan, lahat pong ito ay nagpapakita na kailangan natin ng urgent need to develop policies. Yon. So, ano ang pwede natin gawin bilang mga tao upang sa ganon ay uh, pababain? Halimbawa, yung carbon emission. Yan. Pababain yung pollution ng mga gas. At imbis na gumamit ng gasolina, ay gumamit ng mga tinatawag po natin na renewable sources of energy na kumbaga sana ay mas friendly sa atin pong buhay. So, diyan po, no? Uh, pada, palagi natin naririnig yung salitang stewardship. Tayong lahat ay katiwala ng Diyos sa kanyang mga ginawa. So, yung pala, bahagi ng stewardship, yung tinitignan natin, long-term effect. Ano ba ang magaganap sa ating paggamit o maling paggamit o sobrang paggamit sa iba't ibang ipinagkatiwalang likas yaman ng Diyos sa atin pong daigdig. So, itong nanggaganap ay hindi lamang po scientific. Yun po ang point ni Pope Francis. What is happening in the environment, hindi lang scientific. It is a spiritual message. A message calling us to Conversion of Lifestyle. Yan. Tutuloy po natin ang refleksyon ng Laudato Si. In the meantime, nais po namin kayong imbitahan na maging mission partner sa atin pong Sambuhay, TV Mass, Linggo-Linggo, at Sambuhay, Daily Workers Mass, tuwing alas 6 ng umaga. How can you help? First of all, nasa screen po natin, ang pamamaraan ng sharing of blessings. Kung blines kayo ni Lord, i-bless po natin ang lahat sa pamagitan ng apostolado. Nasa screen po ang mga bank accounts natin at kung may problema po, paki-message lang po kami para mabigyan namin kayo ng instructions. Pangalawa po, you can be a mission partner by texting us. Yung inyo pong mga feedbacks, mga mass intentions, mga short sharings. Kaya nasa screen din po natin ang ating dedicated na text number. And then, you can also be a mission partner by spreading the news, sabi nga nila. So, spreading the good news. Kaya po nasa screen natin ang iba't ibang mga digital accounts na gamit po natin, ipakilala po ninyo ito sa mga relatives ninyo sa abroad, no? At gayon din po ang cable networks na gamit po ng TV Maria. Sa ngalan po ng St. Paul Audiovisuals, si Father Resti de la Peña at lahat po ng bumubuo ng Sambuhay Production, amin pong iniiwan sa inyo ang prayer ni Blessed James Alberione to spend the week well. My dear and sweet Mother Mary, keep your holy hand upon me. Guard my mind, my heart, my senses, that I may never commit sin. Bless my thoughts, affections, words and actions, that I may please you. And Jesus my God, Jesus and Mary, give me Your most holy blessings. Amen.